Both the FDA and a number of industry bodies, including the International Society for Pharmacoeconomics and Outcomes Research, ISPOR, place considerable emphasis on patient-focused drug development and have sought to develop guidance and good practice that ensures patient centricity. Fundamental to this is that a treatment benefit should arise from a positive, clinically meaningful effect of an intervention on how an individual feels, functions, or survives. A clinical outcome assessment is then defined as an assessment of one of these clinical outcomes, i.e. how long a patient lives or how a patient feels or functions in daily life. There are four types of clinical outcome assessment, patient reported, observer reported, clinician reported, and performance-based or PERFO assessments. A PERFO assessment is a measurement based on standardized tasks actively undertaken by a patient according to a set of instructions and may be administered by an appropriately trained individual or completed by the patient independently. PERFO assessments may be particularly valuable sources of information regarding treatment benefit where patient populations may have substantial difficulty in providing reliable self-report and or where concepts of interest for measurement are difficult to observe or impractical or difficult to measure. This is particularly the case for dementia and other diseases and conditions where cognitive impairment is a prominent feature. Whilst there is not currently PERFO specific guidance or good practice for development and validation, those principles established for PRO assessments are considered to apply and a PERFO assessment should still be based on a conceptual framework arising from qualitative research, including concept elicitation in patients, caregivers and clinicians that may also form the basis for conceptual models of the disease. Larson et al. present one such disease model based on in-depth interviews and qualitative analyses in five older adult males with dementia with Lewy bodies. This identified several important aspects of the lived experience of the disease, with cognitive symptoms as one component of this, which have consequences for how individuals feel and function. For PERFO assessments in particular, the additional use of quantitative evidence may be important to understanding symptom presentation and symptom measurement, since those aspects of the disease that make self-report outcome measures less reliable may also impact the utility of qualitative data for informing clinical outcome assessment instrument development, selection and validation. Evidence that arises from comprehensive neuropsychological evaluations, natural history and registry trials and other types of clinical research also helps to build an understanding of the clinical presentation of the disease and can also identify useful assessment tools, which may be abstract and thus, thus might not be elicited via patient and caregiver interviews. And this may include certain kinds of cognitive tasks. Data for the present analysis were drawn from predose assessments in a phase 2a double-blind placebo-controlled parallel group study conducted at 22 centres in the US and two in the Netherlands, in a mild to moderate probable dementia with Lewy body population, according to McKeith et al. consensus criteria. 115 patients were screened for possible inclusion in the study using the clinical dementia rating and the mini mental status examination, and were also asked to complete a cognitive test battery at two familiarisation sessions, as well as the baseline. This cognitive battery included tasks assessing psychomotor function, visual attention, visual learning, working memory, executive function, verbal fluency, and verbal learning and memory, consistent with the patient experience of and the clinical presentation of cognitive symptoms associated with DLB. These initial data show that a Z-score composite has good test-retest reliability across the screening and baseline assessments with an ICC greater than 0.8. By defining validity as a unitary construct, where there are multiple sources of evidence as opposed to different types of validity, we may be able to further support 
the validation of PERFO assessments, especially where tasks are abstract and the relative value and importance of different evidence types may change. Here we can see that there is good support that the test battery conducted may measure relevant concepts arising from content validity associated with qualitative and quantitative research and disease models. We see too that it is associated with a measure of global cognition, the MMSE, supporting this as a measure of cognitive function in DLB, and that there is an association with a measure of function in daily life, the CDR, supporting ecological validity. It should be noted that there may be substantial variation in the cognitive presentation in dementia with Lewy bodies, particularly in early disease. And so work will be necessary to ensure that this type of heterogeneity is appropriately reflected in any measurement instrument, as well as considering its suitability for the assessment of specific disease stages. The association identified with the clinical dementia rating is encouraging. Despite the um, sometimes false dichotomization into three cognitive and three functional items that may be seen in the literature, the CDR was intended as a measure of a unitary construct, which is the influence of cognitive loss on the ability to conduct everyday activities. Thus, an association um, with the CDR suggests an association with function in daily life. Whilst well-conducted CDR assessments are well able to capture heterogeneity in symptom presentation and severity, it should be noted that the CDR is not a DLB-specific instrument, and there may be some symptom domains or specific symptoms that are not addressed either in its content or in the semi-structured interview. These include, um, specific to cognition, concepts like attention, fluctuations in attention, executive function and working memory. Whilst further work then is needed to continue validation and iterative development, these initial data are encouraging and suggest that a composite which is comprised of tasks assessing reaction time, attention, visual learning, working memory and verbal fluency may be a valid and reliable assessment of cognition in DLB clinical trials and it may be possible then to develop and validate a PERFO assessment addressing cognitive function for clinical trials to demonstrate treatment benefit.